Hey guys, happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, you know, we've covered quite a bit already in this series as far as setting up a Raspberry Pi home server. So my plan for today was actually to talk about Nginx Proxy Manager on a Raspberry Pi, but then I realized I actually already made that video back in June. Uh, so I went over and I looked at it, made sure that everything looked good on it. Uh, it's still, uh, still everything there is relevant. Uh, so I've actually gone ahead and moved that video into the playlist that's linked in the description down below. In fact, let's jump over to my desktop here and take a look. Uh, here is the playlist as it currently stands for the home, uh, home server on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, the first video we talked about the hardware we're going to use. Uh, then we talked about uh, you know getting Open Media Vault installed on Raspberry Pi. Uh, just And that was real simple with like four or five commands. That was done pretty quickly there. After that, uh, we talked about installing Docker and Portainer. We even did a little bit of an overclock on a Raspberry Pi, uh, providing you've got enough uh, cooling for that to work. Uh, then we went on to install Duplicati. So we've got good backups of our server uh, from from the start. That's like kind of the first things I really wanted to, to get on this server uh, instead of doing like I did last time and putting it like clear at the end. Uh, this way we can back up as we go versus trying to back up everything all at once. So we got uh, Duplicati set up and installed. Uh, then, like I said, I, I took a look at this Nginx Proxy Manager video and uh, it still passes, uh, still passes the test. It all still works. Everything there is good. Um, so definitely, if you haven't watched that video yet, if you don't have Nginx Proxy Manager installed yet, uh, go ahead and uh, watch that video before you do this video, uh, because there's some prerequisites in that video or it. This video has prerequisites that are met in that video. Let's put it that way. So the next video that I've got in this playlist is Cloudflare DDNS, and that's uh, Cloudflare Dynamic DNS. Uh, basically, if you've got an ISP or an internet service provider uh, that leases you an IP address for a day, a week, a month, whatever, and then changes it, uh, that means you've got to stay on top of that and go in and update Cloudflare uh, manually every time your IP address changes. And that's super frustrating. So uh, luckily uh, the Osnu team put together this little, uh, very, very small uh, uh, image or the, this container to automatically update uh, Cloudflare anytime your IP address changes. So if you want to take advantage of that, definitely take a look at that video as well. So that kind of brings us up to speed with where we are right now. Um, what I want to focus on today is a big one that a lot of people have asked about uh, in recent comments, and that is NextCloud. Uh, I've done a couple of videos on NextCloud, but I wasn't real happy with them. And that's why I'm remaking the video for, of NextCloud for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's very, very simple to set up, uh, but there are some steps you kind of got to go through uh, to make sure everything works properly. Uh, so let's actually focus on getting uh, NextCloud installed on our Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to go ahead and close this window. Uh, here you can see I've got Open Media Vault installed. Uh, I'm already in uh, the shared folders area where you can see we've got our backups uh, and our config and our databases that we set up uh, in previous videos. So those should all be uh, in your uh, in your shared folders. If they're not, I definitely encourage you to go back and rewatch the series to find out where those came from. Uh, then over here, we've got Portainer and here we can see uh, all of the different apps we've got up and running. Uh, the first one obviously we installed was Portainer. That's when we installed Portainer. Portainer gets its own container. Uh, then we did RPI Monitor uh, just so that we, when we want to, we can come over here and take a look and see what our, our CPU usage is looking like, what kind of uh, clock frequencies we're getting, voltages we're using, temperatures we're getting, that sort of thing. Uh, we can kind of get a quick glance at this. Uh, and that was just one that we installed uh, right after we installed Portainer. Again, we've got Cloudflare DDNS, we've got uh, Next or Nginx Proxy Manager, uh, the database and the application, uh, as well as Duplicati in here. Uh, so we've got all of that up and running on our Raspberry Pi at this point. So the next thing we want to do uh, is come over here to Stacks and we want to add a new stack and we want to call this next cloud like so. So let's go ahead and close that. Um, and then let's come over here. I will have this, uh, this, a uh, gist or gist, however you want to pronounce that over on GitHub. Uh, I will have that available in the description down below. I'm just going to go ahead and copy that, come back over here and paste this in here. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this. We can see it's version two. Uh, we're going to have a couple of volumes, one for the uh, next cloud and one for the database. Uh, now that I think about it, we don't really actually need those um, because uh, we're not using those volumes. So let's actually delete that. Uh, below that, we've got services. The first service we've got is the database. Um, in order for this to work, you can, you're going to have to probably switch this from uh, the Maria database that NextCloud comes with by default 
over to, I like to use the Yopa Systems Alpine Maria database. Uh, it works on Raspberry Pi. I've been using it for quite a while. Uh, when I've got an application uh, database that won't work, I just default to this. You may have a different one that you like, but I like the Yopa Systems. It just works for me. Uh, below that, we've got a command to run. Uh, we're gonna restart always, just in case something crashes or whatever, it'll automatically restart. That way your next cloud instance doesn't ever go down, hopefully. Uh, below that, we've got our volumes. So for this volume, I've got SRB, dev disk by label files, databases, next cloud. So let's come back over here and uh, let's take a look. We've got SRB, dev disk by label files, databases. Uh, so that's exactly what we've got over here. Uh, we just appended that with next cloud. Um, and below that, we've got, uh, and, we're, and we're mounting that to this var lib MySQL. Uh, below that, we've got uh, environmental variables. Uh, I, I encourage you to change all of these, um, but make note of them because you're gonna need them later. Um, it, well, you won't need the root password here, um, but whatever you change these to, make note of them, uh, at least temporarily so you can get things installed. Uh, below that, we've got our app. Uh, that is going to be the image of NextCloud. We're gonna put that on port 8080. Uh, we're gonna link to this database up here. And for the volumes, uh, again, we've got uh, dev disk by label uh, files config, uh, just like we've got right here. Uh, and we've appended that, of course, with NextCloud. And while I'm thinking about this, I actually did some testing with this uh, uh, the other day. So let me uh, actually, so what I wanna do um, is actually come into, I'm gonna do CD SRV uh, dev disk by label files. Uh, I wanna go into config, there we go. Uh, and then NextCloud, actually let me look in there. Uh, Duplicati is in there, NextCloud is not, that's good. I just, I created these images and I kind of went through this process the other day just to make sure everything still worked um, as, as it should. Uh, and I wanted to make sure that there wasn't going to be anything conflicting in here. Uh, so let's uh, CD into databases. Let's take a look. There's nothing in databases there, so that's good. Uh, all of that's empty, so we're not gonna have any weird stuff going on uh, as we're installing this. So uh, with that being said, uh, before we move any further here. Okay, so now that this all looks good, what we're gonna do is actually deploy this stack and then we're gonna pause uh, that process for just a moment. Uh, then we're gonna come over to Nginx Proxy Manager and actually set up a host to, uh, to actually configure everything on the actual domain that we're gonna use for NextCloud. If we try to go to, uh, you know, hal.local uh, port 8080 and we set it up, uh, it'll only really be available on hal.local port 8080 and it won't be available uh, to the internet. So uh, we definitely want to uh, make sure that we access this for the setup on the actual domain that we're going to use. Um, so I've got uh, Nginx Proxy Manager set up and ready for us here. I I've already got, um, I purchased a domain name uh, from uh, Porkbun. In fact, I wanna pause the video right here for just a second and talk about Porkbun. Um, they actually just released a few uh, new extensions. Uh, they released .click and .link uh, extensions. They'd be like .com, but instead of .com, .click or .link. Uh, they've got them on sale through the end of the year for like $3.83. But uh, if you use the, the coupon code DBTECH, all in caps, you can actually get up to three of those domain names for 99 cents a piece. And right now I think they're scheduled to renew in a year for like less than eight bucks. Uh, don't hold me to that, that could change. Um, but right now uh, you can get domain names for 99 cents, uh, dot .click and dot .link domains for 99 cents on uh, Porkbun by using code DBTECH. So I encourage you to go check that out as well. Um, so I've gone ahead and pointed uh, my dbtech.click domain over to my next, or to, over to my Cloudflare account. And I've got that subdomain set up for cloud.dbtech.link. And I've got my DNS set to uh, DNS only, not proxied. Once we've got all of that set up, what we can do is come over to here. We're gonna click on deploy the stack. Uh, we'll give this a minute to download and extract and create all of the uh, stuff that it needs to create. And then we can actually come back and uh, make sure that everything works before we move on to the next steps. Okay, so uh, NextCloud is uh, right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Both of these are running, but let's take a look uh, in here. It says it's initializing NextCloud 20.0.1.1. So we're gonna give that a minute to do its thing. Uh, once we get to this point where it says Apache uh, minus D uh, foreground, that's usually a good indicator that everything is up and running and good to go. So let's come over here to the database. Uh, that all looks good. We're running on port 3306. So that should be good to go. Let's jump over here to port 8080. Now, this is where we're gonna stop. This is, well, this is where we're gonna pause. Um, 
we just wanted to come to this held out local port 8080 just to make sure that the container is up and running. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and close that to avoid any confusion uh, as we move forward. Now, the next thing we're going to do is come over here. We're going to set up a proxy host. We're going to add a proxy host. Uh, we're going to say uh, cloud.dbtech.link, uh, uh, or sorry, dot .click, uh, like so. We're going to click add. Uh, we're going to say uh, 192.168.68.126. Uh, that's the IP address that hell.local is pointed to. Uh, so we're going to change uh, this po uh, forward port to 8080. We're going to set uh, block common exploits. That seems like a pretty good idea. Just anything that it recognizes as an exploit, it'll block that automatically. So that's good. Uh, over here, we're going to go to SSL. We're going to say we want to request a new SSL, force SSL, and force HTTP2 support. Uh, if you have HSTS enabled on your Cloudflare account, you can enable HSTS here and here. Um, if you don't, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, we're going to go ahead and agree to the terms here, and then we're going to say save. Now, hopefully uh, this just works um, and it should. Uh, usually by this point, if it's going to throw an error, it would have done it already. So let's give this just a moment to do its thing here. Awesome. So that looks like it worked. What we want to do next, though, is actually come in here and edit this. Go over here to SSL and, and recheck those. For some reason, those get unchecked, and I don't know why. We're going to click save. And then we should be able to click right here. And there we go. Now we're on cloud.dbtech.click. We've got our little icon right here. So that all looks really good. But uh, what we want to do is come over to here, uh, check that so that it's proxied now and click save. And uh, then we can refresh. That all looks really good. So what we want to do next uh, is create a username, uh, an admin user, like so. We're going to change this. Uh, we're going to click on MySQL slash Marie database. Uh, let's come back over here to Portainer, and I'm just going to copy this, um, and we're just going to paste all of that in there, uh, like so. And this is actually going to be DB, oops, DB, not DN, uh, because uh, the service right here is DB. So that's what we're going to use uh, for our host name. Uh, then we should be able to come down here and click Finish Setup. And if everything goes well, uh, it won't throw an error, and that would be miraculous. Uh, I've, I've done this so many times and had it throw an error on me that it just, it's frustrating, you know? So uh, it looks like all this is gonna work just fine. So we're gonna hang out for just a little while here. Let this do its thing. Uh, you can see down here, it also, uh, we also have this install recommended apps uh, checked right there. So it's gonna install calendar, contacts, talk, mail, and collaborative editing. Uh, you can always uncheck that, well, before you click go, you can uncheck that and install whichever of those you want. Uh, these are just kind of the default recommended apps. Uh, so that's why I did that. So we'll give this a, uh, a couple of minutes to download and extract and do all of its magic in the background. And then we'll come back and uh, take a look at what we've got set up. Sorry, um, I forgot which cup I was using. Uh, I promise I'm not flipping you guys off. Okay, so that was good. That means there were no errors uh, with the initial install. Now it's actually gonna go through and install all of the apps uh, that we told it to install. Uh, we'll give this a few minutes. Uh, this is actually going by pretty quickly. Uh, so that's great. Uh, so well, like I said, we'll just kind of hang out when this is finished. It'll take us to our dashboard and that's really all we have to do. And there we go, just a couple of minutes of it installing applications. Now it's brought us to our homepage here, our dashboard, uh, where we can kind of go through, you know, getting familiar with Nextcloud, that sort of thing. I encourage you to go through this, look through the app stores, do that kind of thing. Uh, you can, of course, install this on your phone, your desktop, uh, basically wherever you want to install it for file synchronization, things like that. Um, th there's uh, more information here with, um, you know, instruction manuals for everybody, for users and admins and developers. Uh, community, uh, they encourage you to become part of the community, and it, or you can just start using Nextcloud. Here are the files that are recommended. Uh, if you've got Talk installed and you want to have a conversation, you can use Talk Mentions, uh, all kinds of stuff going on in here. Of course, you can customize this. Uh, you can change the wallpapers. You can look at recent statuses. You can turn things on and off, you know, as you want to there. Um, 
I think we can actually, yeah, we can move these things around here uh, so that you can kind of figure out what you want to do there. Uh, you can set your status, uh, all kinds of really cool stuff there. But there we go. Nextcloud's all set up and accessible from the internet on our Raspberry Pi. A very, very simple process. Uh, didn't really take too long other than just sitting here and waiting. So hopefully this answers some questions on how to do this. And I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, it'd mean a lot to me if you guys would go so far as to click the like button. It would help me out a bunch. It actually does help quite a bit with the algorithm. Also, it'd be cool if you guys would let me know in the comment section down below uh, if you had any problems with this uh, or if you got it to work on the first go, whatever the case may be. Uh, definitely let me know uh, your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. Uh, also, like I said, all of this will be available in the description down below as well. Uh, links to blog posts, uh, links to other videos, uh, everything you could possibly need for this, including links to the uh, to the uh, the playlist that this is, video is going to be in, uh, will also be in the description down below. I'm going to try to make this as easy as possible to follow along with. So. Uh, while you're down there checking out those links, there's also a couple of links for different ways you can support the channel, either through coffee, which is like a one-time tip jar, or there's Patreon. Uh, of course, we're all familiar with Patreon. I've got a few different levels at which you can subscribe, and a couple of those uh, levels will give you early access to my content when it's available. But I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support, and I'll talk to you in the next video.